I'm genuinely delighted to be joined by Patrick Sang. Patrick, first of all, can I say thank you? Yeah. Because you're part of the reason why I love athletics. The image of you and Moses Kiptanui in 1993, the World Championships, is in my mind forever. But with that in mind, you're not just Elliot Kipchoge's coach. You are a three-time Olympic and world silver medalist. Why are Kenya so good at running? You represented Kenya. They dominate the world. Wow, that's a tough question. But uh, <clears throat> uh, going back and looking at the history of uh, Kenya, uh, coming out of uh, uh, different administration, being an uh, uh, independent country, uh, there was already in the transition zone a rich history where um, Kenyans had participated uh, under the M uh, Empire Games, um, you know, and they set up a good tradition through the people like Kip Kaino. Um, uh, uh, there are so many others, uh, Nyandika Mayoro. Uh, so we had already started a tradition and every new athlete coming in would always like to, to emulate whatever had been set by the, the predecessors. And Elliot is one of those people who's done just that. So there's, we've had a, a sort of a relay uh, arrangement where the generation of the 60s handed over to the generation of the 70s, handed over to the generation of the 80s. And uh, that's where I, I, I came out of. And uh, now we, we're handing over to people like Elliot and you, you know, the, 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 the relay uh, form, formation is continuing. That relay batting carried on. Yeah. You met Elliot as a teenager. Yeah, yeah. I met, uh, I mean, interestingly, I didn't know he was Elliot. Uh, there was this kid who used to come and say, ah, you know, can you write for me a program? And I'll just, you know, make notes for him, say, uh, for two weeks, you know, go and follow this. And he would come back after two weeks to say, ah, now I finished, what can I do from here? And kept the, uh, the rhythm going. After, I think, close to two months, I was asking him, who are you? And he says, I'm Elliot Kipchoge. Uh, we come from the same area. And that is uh, about 18, 19 years ago. So we started a journey, and here we are, we're still on the journey. Am I right in thinking that his mother was your kindergarten teacher? Uh, yes. Uh, of course, that time when I started asking him who he was and where he came from. So when he mentioned the home, you know, then I said, yeah, you know, your mom was uh, my kindergarten teacher. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the relationship of coach, athlete, mentor, mentee, um, you know, started. And um, it's been uh, a good journey. Uh, you know, something that when you reflect, you say, hey, it was a worthwhile thing that, um, because in between that year, 2002, 2001, and now, you know, you, you can see what he has achieved. It's been an unbelievable journey, started on the track, ended on the road. Mm. <clears throat> I would say he was fantastic on the track, but on the road, he's a great. What's made him so good on the road and specifically the marathon? One thing is that uh, I think he, he took up running uh, from the time he started knowing exactly what he wanted to do. Uh, I think uh, sometimes we take athletes to go or young people to go into running. We are telling them, go do running. But I think in the case of Elliot, I think he came himself into running with a mission and an idea of what he wanted to achieve. Uh, I think that's one aspect that um, it's a bit different from other athletes. Uh, we have two systems of uh, incentives. We have the intrinsic values that drives you towards whatever you want to achieve, you, and then you have your external uh, value system that come in the package of incentive. Uh, but I think with him, the, the, the internal uh, incentive uh, mechanism was, were more stronger than and, and what you would compare when an athlete is being driven by an external force. With that idea of it coming from internal, yeah. did he always want to break the world record in the marathon, which he did last year? Uh, you know, when you are uh, driven internally, you, you tend to be more focused on the goals 
uh, that you set for yourself in life, you know, in whatever uh, journey you want to pursue, uh, and targets that you want to, it helps and it, it, it enhances the chances of achieving those goals. And of course, you know, when you perform in the track and field and you, you reach the top, you come to the road, you reach the top, you know, there's always something that within you makes you push a little bit harder to, to a higher goal. And I guess that's what uh, makes him a bit different from others, <laughs> and like, like us. <laughs> to totally, mere mortals. Yeah. And hopefully that's why he will do the sub two hours. He tried it in 2017. He wasn't successful by just 26 seconds. How did that affect him afterwards? To me, I think he came out of the monster experience, uh, a better person, a stronger uh. person, because um, Going to Monza, everybody was saying it's impossible. You know, um, so, and he believed that it was possible. So, of course, the, the humid conditions got worse towards the end of the race and uh, made him not to get the, the, the packet. But running two hours, what people, even the, the well informed in f physiology and things to do with the human performance were believing that this was not possible and it came to being possible. I think uh, left him coming out of that battle zone, <laughs> yes. if I may call in quotes, uh, a better prepared person, a better strong, I mean, a, a more stronger person. And you, you saw what happened in a, a other races that followed after. He was going in with a lot of confidence that I am able to do it. He did it um, in 2003 in horrible conditions, rainy, wet. He did it in London 2003 when it was very warm and very hot towards the end. I mean, last year uh, <laughs> in Berlin and, and ideal conditions, he ran, you know, unbelievable world record. And this year in London, in windy, cold conditions, he ran 2002. So, I mean, that is knowledge gained from that experience in Monza that it's possible and even uh, it's even possible in the normal races. Elliot himself says, no human is limited, and I believe it because he says it. Do you think it's possible and what would it mean for Elliot and the world were he to break the sub two hour marathon? I believe myself that uh, he's gonna do it. Uh, I mean, and it's not uh, guesswork. We are coming from uh, a documented journey where it's come closer and closer, even in worse conditions. So I believe it. Uh, what it would mean to the rest of us, the, the ones who occupy the planet Earth, uh, I think it will give an inspiration. And that inspiration is like, you know, if we open our minds a little bit. We can achieve more in whatever sector of our lives, uh, you know, more than what we think. I think that's the home, the taco message. After the achievement, the taco message is that we can still achieve more from where we stand in our lives. Patrick, thank you so much for your time. And for me, as a lifelong athletics fan, this is as big as it gets. But the question that really only Patrick knows the answer to is how is he gonna do it?